In our last video, we had a look at hydrocarbons, or molecules that are made from hydrogen and carbon and nothing else. But did you know that you could replace the hydrogen with another atom or even group of atoms? That's right. Today we're going to take a look at what some people call hydrocarbon substitution products. I like to refer to them as dingly danglies that dangle off the dongle. That's right, dingly danglies that dangle off the dongle. In other words, other atoms besides hydrogen that could be bonded to a hydrocarbon chain, which would mean it's not a hydrocarbon anymore, technically. We're going to start off with two different kinds of dingly danglies, and in the next video we're going to significantly ramp it up. The rest of this series is going to be about the dingly danglies that dangle off the dongle and how you get those dingly danglies to dangle off the dongle. The first kind of dingly dangly that you can have dangling off the dongle is called an alkyl group. Now, as the name implies, it's an alkane molecule that's had its end hydrogen removed and stuck onto another hydrocarbon chain. Now, alkyl groups maintain the status as a hydrocarbon because an alkyl group has just hydrogen and carbon in it. A methyl group, as the name implies, contains one carbon in it. So 2-methyl pentane would be pentane, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, pent is 5 carbons, and on the second carbon in from the end, we have a single carbon sticking onto our chain. Does it matter what side? Nope. It could either be two carbons in from this end or two carbons in from this end. Because the molecule is three-dimensional, you can move it around. So, eeny, meeny, money, moe, catch tiger, by toe, if you holler, take a pay, fifty dollars every day. I'll put it over here. And then you have to make sure that all the carbons have four bonds. Any loose bonds go to which element? Oh yeah, hydrogen. And as long as you remember that, you don't have to draw them because the hydrogens are implied. Can you believe how fast I write? It's amazing. An ethyl group, unlike your aunt ethyl, contains two carbon atoms that are attached to each other. So if we have three ethyl hexane, hexane means six carbons, and on the third carbon in from the end, it could be this one or this one, in three or in three, there's two carbons that are connected to each other. Did I have to put them down there? Nope, I could have put them sticking up here also, or sticking down here, or sticking up there. As long as there are three carbons in from the end, doesn't matter whether they're sticking up or sticking down. As far as this course is concerned, general chemistry course, every bond on the carbon is equivalent. Now when you get into organic chemistry, this is not necessarily going to be so. But for the basic stuff, doesn't matter where you put those ethyls, top or bottom, doesn't matter. Then fill in the rest of the carbons with hydrogens, and we'll just leave them implied this time because that's just too many H's to draw. So what's the name of this molecule? Well, you have four carbons in a row. Four carbons is but, butane. And you have a single carbon, methyl, as a dingly dangly dangling off the dongle at the second carbon in from the end. Hey, why is it the third carbon in from the end? Because you always use the lowest possible number. You got a choice between three and two, you're going to stick with the two, the lowest number. 2-methylbutane is the name of that molecule. The other kind of dingly dangly that you can have dangling off the dongle is called a halide group. Now halide comes from the term halogen, which includes fluoro, chloro, bromo, or iodo. If your hydrocarbon has a hydrogen removed and a fluorine put in its place, or a chlorine, bromine, or iodine put in its place, it's no longer called a hydrocarbon. It's called a halocarbon. Now that doesn't mean it plays violent video games. It just means there's a halogen bonded to your hydrocarbon. Sometimes it's also referred to as a halide or even an alkyl halide. All these different terms. One chloroethane would be two carbons because eth means two carbons. And one chloro means that on the first carbon in from the end, well, they're both the first carbon in from the end, there is a single chlorine. Where am I going to put that chlorine? I can put it anywhere. I'll, I'll put it there. 
All bonds on a carbon are equivalent, so I could have put it here or here. I could have put it here, here, or here, because that would also be the first carbon. That's one chloroethane. And what's on here? That's right, implied hydrogens. Two bromobutane. Bute means four carbons. And on the second carbon in from the end, there's a bromine. Could be here, could be here, because that's the second carbon in. That's the second carbon in. I could be here or here. It doesn't really matter, so eh, there, I'll put it there. And then we fill in with our implied hydrogens, so all carbons have four bonds. Okay, so let's name this. There's one, two, three, four, five carbons, which is pent, pentane. Why ain't? Because they're all single bonds. There's a fluorine, which we call fluoro, and it's on the third carbon in from the end. It doesn't matter which way you go in, that's still the third carbon in from the end. Three fluoropentane. You don't need to have anything added to the name if it's on the top or the bottom, because all the bonds on the carbon are equivalent, as far as we're concerned here. Actually, for this molecule, it's true. Now, what if you've got more than one dingly dangly dangling off the dongle? Well, then you need to use prefixes. If there's one dingly dangly, you don't need to have a prefix. Two dingly danglies get the prefix of di. Three gets tri. Four gets tetra. Five gets penta. Hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. But you don't have to worry about that. We'll just go as high as penta. You also have to have a number for each of them. If it's dichloro, we'll need two numbers to show us where each of the chloros is bonded to the dongle. So we have butane, which is four carbons. On the second and third carbon in from the end, second and third carbon in from the end, we have chlorines. And then we just fill up with hydrogens. Hey, why aren't you putting bonds around the chlorines, dude? Well, if I may remind you, chlorine has a configuration of 2-8-7. Seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chlorine can only form one covalent bond. So that's it. That's the end of the story. 1,4-dibromopentane. Pent is five carbons. On the first and fourth carbon in from the end, there are bromines. What end do we want to start from? La 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 la. Okay, we'll start from this end. So on the first and the fourth carbon in, there are bromines. And fill them up with hydrogens. And just like with the chlorine, Bromine, like all halogens, has seven valence electrons, which means it can only form one bond, and that bond is to the carbon. 2,2-dimethylbutane. But is four carbons. 2,2-dimethyl. That means on the second carbon in from the end, there are two methyls. Now, meth is one carbon. So we'll put a single carbon there and a single carbon there. And then, fill up all the carbons until they all have four bonds. Hey, you didn't fill up the chlorines. Well, this is carbon, not chlorine, right? Carbon forms four bonds no matter where it is. One chloro, two, three dibromopentane. So pent has five carbons. There's, on the first carbon, there's a chloro. On the second and third carbons, there's bromos. I think you can probably get a feel as to why there are millions of organic compounds. There's all kinds of ways you could arrange this. I could have had one chloro, one one dibromo. I could have one chloro, two two dibromo. One chloro, one two dibromo. One chloro, one three dibromo. I mean, there's so many ways of arranging this chlorine and bromine on these five carbons that you can get dozens of molecules just from this. The more carbons you have, the more possible isomers you're going to get. Just like the more Legos you have, the more things you can build with it.